Hi and welcome back. Today I have a fun video for you. Now, while I'm not too fond of the term influencer, I am of course aware that when I talk about certain products, some of you might be influenced to buy them, which by the way is a responsibility I do not take lightly. But just like some of you, I am just as easily influenced and I have bought many products other influencers or YouTubers have talked about. So in today's video, I'm talking to my friend Mary, who has the channel Skin Obsessed Mary, and we will be talking about products other influencers or YouTubers influenced us to buy. Hi Mary, it's so great to see you. Ah, it's great to be here, thank you. Mary and I actually know each other, we have met in Paris. And we talk, on a regular <laughs> we talk on a regular basis. It's great to see you, though. So, Mary, I was saying in the intro that I'm not fond of the word influencer. Obviously, I know that I sometimes influence people to buy certain products, but it is a responsibility I don't take lightly. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about the term? How do you feel about knowing that you influence people to buy certain products? You know, it's a tricky one because I think, like yourself, I don't consider myself an influencer. I don't like the word because I think that... To some extent, in my own brain, and whether I'm right or wrong, I feel that it's it can be seen as people that are just trying to push product for a personal gain. And, and that isn't why I'm here. It's not why I started this channel. And I'm just someone who loves, you know, skincare and taking care of myself. And this really just started off as a hobby, my channel, just as a way to share with people what I was doing. So what I do is stuff that I do for me. And I'm just kind of sharing my journey along the way. So, you know... It's tricky because to your point, we are influencing people in so far as people might like the videos, they might like what you say about something and it gives them a reason to try them. And I guess it is, to your point, a serious sort of position to be in because everything that I do is just for me. I'm buying stuff for me and I'm giving my own personal opinions and how it relates to me and my skin and my journey. Um, and I'm not doing it for any other reason than to share that sort of stuff. I don't take it lightly either, but I do like to preface everything by saying this is just what works for me or doesn't work for me. There are loads of things that I don't like that people love. And that's great. You should do whatever makes you happy. And I think at the end of the day, it's just trying to remember that we're just people. We're normal people, you and me. We're sitting at home tinkering around with all these things. We just happen <laughs> to sit in front of a camera and we share it with the world. Do you think about sort of the same? I do. Yeah. And it is something that I don't take lightly for sure especially now in this financial climate when people don't yeah. really have money. And here we're talking about things that people might not necessarily need, but they could be fun to have. Absolutely. And so it is definitely something that I sometimes struggle with. I also sometimes think, what if I talk about something I really love and then I change my mind? To me, it's like when I say something, that's I mean that. And so there are some products though that I have talked highly about and maybe three months, six months later, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I've changed my mind. And then I really struggle with that. I've It's kept me up at night because I do feel I've told people, not, I haven't told people to buy this. Like you said, we're doing this for us and yeah. people might buy it. But I do still feel I, I have told people this is great and they might have bought yep. it. So it is, it is definitely something I struggle with and it keeps me up at night sometimes. <laughs> You know, and it would be interesting to see. I wonder if your viewers would be interested in seeing even those kind of videos that are the reality behind what we're doing. Because I definitely have products that I loved. And then over time, they just didn't work. And it's not something that we generally cycle back on. I don't anyway, because I've moved on to something else. Maybe that's something that we should be doing, you and I should be doing, is, is sort of circling back around to go, what happens after three months or six months or 12 months? Are we still using those same products? But it happens a lot. And, and I have a little spinny thing over here that keeps all my products on it. And when I get to the end of something and you go, even though I loved it, am I going to repurchase it? For me, oftentimes, it's no, because there's something else I want to try. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the other downfall. Even if I love something, I'm generally going to move on to something else because technology changes and there's all this new research and there's just newness coming out in products. And that's what gets me interested and what has always had me interested in this kind of stuff. Let's talk about some products. What are some products okay. that you were influenced by, by whom and which have you actually repurchased of those products? I made a list here or like, what are my favorite products? I mean, the products that I'm using regularly, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll start with the one that I've probably been using the longest, and but this is a device. Now, I like devices. I like tinkering with those devices because I'm, geez, I'm just a few weeks away from 52. So everything's starting to go south and, you know, you're just not as buoyant <laughs> as we were, when we were when we were young. So the very first device I ever bought was the Omnilex LED face mask. And I purchased that, I think in 2021, and it was Angie over at Hot and Flashy. 
it was her experience with the LED mask that, that that was the first one that I got hooked on. And I still use LED, you know, four times a week regularly. So that was my first purchase by an influencer. And it was expensive. It was 350 bucks. Like I nearly, oh, kind of did one of those with it because it was not an insignificant event, but I'm still using it. What about you? You have influenced me to buy a lot of stuff. I have a bunch of stuff right here that you recently influenced me to buy. One of them is this right here by Allies of Skin. This is yep. beautiful. Oh, it's you can see I'm definitely using it. Yeah, this is fabulous. The so you liked it. Peptide and antioxidant filming daily treatment. Yes. You've also influenced <laughs> me to buy some true botanicals. <gasps> That's my favorite. This is the pure radiance oil. This is beautiful. The smell is gorgeous. The smell. Oh, it's yeah. unreal. And it does give your skin just such a glow, such a glow. This is something I'll definitely repurchase. This is something you also influenced me to buy. This is the cleansing balm. The, um, what is this? The turmeric, the ginger turmeric cleansing balm. This is gorgeous. This I will definitely repurchase. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if I live in the US, I would be, I would have that on a replenishment. 100%. But mm -hmm. because I live in Europe and I have to ship it internationally, it gets very expensive for me. So it's like when I go back to the States, then I'll pick it up. And that that's sort of the way I do it. But that's it's taken over as my all-time favorite balm cleanser on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, I, love right it. Yeah. I am lucky I have an American address so I can get I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so jealous. Okay. I'm going to say the favorite thing that I have purchased from you is this. The oil lift. I love that thing. I love this thing. It was you that convinced me and the results that I got from this. And I still don't actually understand it. <laughs> I've done videos about it. I've watched all the videos about it. This thing works. You know, this is one of those devices that I just, I, I am, it's a regular part of my routine because it works. So nice one. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what makes me happy when I, when I have a video and I, you know, I don't make that many videos on products. I make videos on other things as well. But when somebody like you or another viewer comes back and says, I purchased this because of you and it's made such a difference. That mm -hmm. makes me happy. That's when I like to be an influencer because it's yeah, like I actually, enough. it made a tiny bit of a difference. Whether yeah. that is something that makes them feel better temporarily, like something like this or the oil lift that can actually do some real change. So that is- so You're is absolutely right. And I think one of the things I love about having this channel is the interaction. People do take the time to leave comments and to let you know when they've tried something. And I love that. And I've made, I mean, you and I are friends now because of these channels, right? Yeah. And that in itself is great. Um, and it was brilliant. I just happened to be going to Paris and you said, let's meet for a coffee. And we did. And it's sort of just taken off from there, which is great. But there are even, you know, subscribers that will comment on every video and they're yeah. kind of with you on the journey and they're like oh i remember that one over there but do you still like this and you kind of really start to get to know people and you know their daughter's getting married and the next thing you know you sort of forge these these friendships that, that yeah. would never have happened without this channel and i think that's really exciting so to your point when someone says i tried that moisturizer best thing i've ever had you know la, la, you're like oh that's brilliant yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. I feel the same. you get the other way too and they go it doesn't suit me and it's like well not everything is going to suit everybody and that's the way it goes too I was going to say, how do you how do you feel about that? If somebody follows your recommendation and then it doesn't work out, how do you feel about oh, that? Oh, it happens. Of course, it happens. I try to ask why. You know what what was what was the effect, or you know what did it do for you? And I, when people ask for recommendations, I would always start by saying, you know, what's your skin type, and what are you trying to get something to do? Because they might not be aligned at all. I like products that skew for more dehydrated old dehydrated older skin but if somebody has really oily skin chances are most of the products i use aren't going to work for that so you know i'm on sort of a subset of an older age range so there's that sort of you know things don't work for everybody for a variety of reasons and you kind of say gosh i'm really sorry well tell me another product you've been influenced to buy by whom how do you like it okay now this is an interesting one because i think your mind has changed because the product has changed and it is the Sleep and Glow pillow, mm -hmm. the Omnia pillow. Mm -hmm. uh, I did buy it because of you. And I remember you talking about being in your six weeks on the road, you know, in a camper van. Mm -hmm. And if you hadn't had your Sleep and Glow pillow, it would have been a very bumpy ride. Now, I am an eternal back sleeper. It's taken me a very long time to learn how to do it. And I'd been tinkering around with products without huge amounts of success. And I bought that product and... I just absolutely love it. Sleep on it absolutely every single night. Now, I know that you said that there's been some product changes and you're not the first person to say it, that they it's not the same pillow that it was when you bought yours, but I never had the first one. So to me, this pillow has just solved all my problems. And it was because of you and Pampered Wolf was also talking about how that was one of her favorite products of, of all time as well. But yeah, I went out and bought it. And again, 
that those are not insignificant spends, those pillows no. either. You know, no. these things are, are meaty purchases. This is not like going down to Macy's or somewhere down the road and buying a pillow for 30 quid. I mean, it costs nearly $200. I'm glad you like it. Like you said, yeah. the, I don't like the new version at all. They have a special pillow designed just for people who sleep on their back. I have that one. It makes me claustrophobic. I actually am going to try that. <laughs> it feels like yeah. you have paper towel rolls next to you. You know, it's very claustrophobic. I'm okay with that. So I think <laughs> I'm going to try that because it just seems like it would suit me. But anyway, okay. that's so funny. But see, that's the thing. What suits one person totally does not suit another. And that's just sort of the way. The I way can give goes, you mine. You know? When you come back here, I can give you mine because I don't use it. Okay, I might take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, something I was influenced by lately by my friend Cheryl who has the channel Yoga Girl World. Do you watch Cheryl? Okay. No, I don't. She's a, she's, a, she's a sweetheart. She talked about this right here, the Altono, which is a tretinoin, 0.05% okay. tretinoin, but you can get this actually on certain websites. So this is a prescription tretinoin and it is an American brand, but on certain websites, you can get it without prescription. And okay. what's neat about this one is it has... Um, Sort of a, I don't know if you can see it, sort of a serum consistency. Oh, yeah, much so nicer oh, than a lotion. It spreads so nicely. It is so hydrating. So this is something I have been loving and will definitely repurchase. That's and did it. you have that sent to you in France, did you? Or did you have it sent for your American site? My American address. I, okay. You know, I have to look. I have to see if they ship within Europe as well. I'll look and let you know. I used to get my tretonin in Italy over the counter, but, you know, we're in France now and I need a prescription. But this is really beautiful because the way it spreads it spreads like a serum it is very hydrating so not irritating i think you which would is like this. not something that tra you you know users would be familiar with because usually yeah. it's quite a drawing kind of a cream an interesting thing that you got me into as well which is supplements i was never in the habit of taking supplements so i learned about more i learned about my supplements through your videos <laughs> and then i was lucky enough to be able to start talking directly with the guys that do not age do not age so it's been an interesting process of even it just opened up a whole new world to me that i wasn't even focusing on i think that's one of the things that's great about your channel too it's not all about skincare and beauty it's not that kind of stuff it is the well-being it's about pro-aging and aging well and in a healthy ways and i love watching your videos about what i ate in a day it makes me absolutely guilt-ridden because <laughs> <laughs> that's not the point though that is not the point of course it's not of course it's not but i'm like gosh i wish i had time and you know i wish i planned better in any way but it's inspirational one of my favorite all-time uh treats is the peanut butter or almond butter filled dates that i got from you and that became like my evening dessert for for months and months and months it's lovely yeah. stuff in there yeah. uh, but it inspires me to to do better and to take better care and um you know i know fitness is very big for you wrap at that trying to get back into that <laughs> myself so there are these other ways that aren't even product related that i've benefited from the videos that you put together and i think they're doing more than just making sure i have my skin <laughs> so thank you that's, that's awesome that's awesome so tell me something else on your list what's another product you have been influenced to buy it's interesting you talked about tretinoin i was late to that game and I think the one that really took me over the edge for Tretton, and this was probably when I was about 43. So I'm almost 52 in a few weeks. And it was Wayne Goss. And there are a couple of things. Two things on my list came from Wayne. One is a makeup and, and the other one was Tretton. And I remember watching him speak about it. I heard Angie speak about it. And it was just this thing that I didn't know a lot about retinoids. In fact, I wasn't great with skin until my 40s. I was not someone who did this forever and ever. I somewhere along the way went, you know, I should probably start washing my face. I just wasn't great <laughs> until I started to get older and you started to see the signs of aging but it was Wayne Goss that was talking about his trip with tretinoin and that sort of led me down a lot of rabbit holes and it was all on YouTube it was all trying to find finding people on YouTube you know I watched a lot of stuff from Angie over at Hot and Flashy and I think one of the key things was learning how to use it so that was probably one of the biggies it was Wayne it was a number of different people I was watching on YouTube a good 10 years ago but now I haven't done it for about 18 months because I ran into a real issue with overstimulation. This is the downside of having a channel. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to try this. Ooh, I'm going to try that. I overdid it between the retinoids and the uh, the AHAs. And just, I think that my skin just said, stop. And I stopped everything. I stopped vitamin Cs. I stopped everything. I started doing skin fasting, which meant I would go for days without even washing my face if I wasn't going to be going outside or whatever. You know, I'd go through these periods of just doing nothing to let my skin sort of heal. So I'm now at the stage where I am going to reintroduce tretinoin, much lower levels and build myself back up because it is the anti-aging giant, isn't it? 
to me, it has made the biggest difference in my skin, not only as far as building collagen and fine lines and wrinkles, but I had a lot of precancerous lesions on my forehead. I had actinic keratosis on my forehead because okay. I used to be a sun worshiper. And I would go to the dermatologist and have them frozen off and they just come back somewhere else. Okay. And finally, my doctor gave me like a chemotherapy in a tube. And I read the side effects and I said, I'm not putting this on my face. Wow. And coincidentally, around the same time, I lived in Italy. I went to the pharmacy and they had tretonine over the counter. So I thought, oh, I'm going to try this. All the actinic kurtosis went away. Wow. It was incredible and it hasn't come back. So to me, it, not just the superficial benefits, but the health benefits of my skin with tretinoine, it's been incredible. What else do you love? So my new obsession is sunscreen. So I have been influenced. I think I bought eight Korean sunscreens lately. I have three of them here. So this is, is my newest obsession. This one I was influenced to buy by Goramista. This is the Dear Cleos. It is gorgeous. I know you and I oh, love right. the Beauty by Chazon. Yeah. No. I, I want to say this is even better. Really? I mean, Mary's, it, Mary's writing this down right now. Okay. Take this, it, just, it just disappears. It nice. is incredible. It doesn't okay. give you the exact, it doesn't give you the same glow as the beauty, I can't talk, as the beauty by Jason, but okay. it is gorgeous. I mean, it just disappears. It's really, really okay. nice. And it's nice under makeup, is it? I don't know because I don't wear makeup, but I would assume it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. I would assume it is. And then this one I was influenced to buy as well. I can't remember by whom. This is the, um, Dear, thank you, Pharma. Oh, it's, okay. it's beautiful, but it smells. Ugh. It has. Oh, no. a, Mary's not writing that down now. <laughs> no, I mean it's gorgeous because it gives you sort of this gorgeous glow, but it smells like an like old lady perfume. I can't do it on my face, so I use it on my neck and my chest. I really don't like anything scented on my face. No, say. it's it's so strong that it bothers my eyes. And then this one, I was influenced by, oh, I forgot her name. I will link it down below. I just recently found her and I really like her. I think you will like her as well, but I'm blanking right now. This is the okay. Sentinel up. This is also a beautiful one. I think Korean sunscreens in particular are mine as well. That's where I'm tinkering with more because they're highly effective. There's a lot of, been a lot of change in SPF over the past few years, um, but I find them easy to wear. So I'm yeah. trying to kick these down to my kids who I'm really trying to get to wear sunscreen every day. Because if you do it when you're in your teens and your 20s, <laughs> keep yeah. saying you're going to thank me when you're my age, you know, uh, and just to try to get them into the routine. But they're just so easy to use and I find they, they just work well. So there's no reason why every single person shouldn't be wearing sunscreen. I'm going <laughs> to be writing those down i'll be checking that description bar below <laughs> and i will be placing my order sunscreens is where it's at if nothing else that's all i would wear in a day you know something else i wanted to talk to you about we talked about this the other day when we did a facetime call it's not just that we get influenced in buying products and this is not a negative thing but you for example influenced me the other day influenced me interest in security and i think that's something that happens too we influence in each other into having certain insecurities as well, which then maybe makes us buy a product. So you were talking about, and again, this is not your fault or anything. This is my own, you know, insecurities and boundary failure. But you were talking about how oh, you, yeah. use, <laughs> how you <laughs> use two eye products. That's right. Yeah. Because you have such crinkly under eyes. And I thought, oh my God, I've never given my under eyes any thought. <laughs> and I ran to Sorry. my magnify mirror. Yeah. And I thought, Do I have crinkly under eyes? Do I need two products? You don't actually. But so it's interesting because it's it's those things too. And those are the things too, I think, that you and I don't take lightly. Because if ever I want to influence somebody, I want to influence them in a positive way and I want to lift women up and not... Be, and it, you didn't do that. I'm just It was just an example, but I don't ever want to... I think that it can be an easy manipulation sort of playing into somebody's insecurity, but sure. don't worry, you can just buy this product, you know? So it is, yeah. it is something I think we have to be really careful with too. And us watching, not just us being an influencer, but us watching videos too, is this does not mean that we need this. This does not mean that we have this problem. Don't take all these insecurities on. You know, I think it's it's very important as women to, and we talked about this too, you and I, I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this, but you and I sometimes get these comments that are, 99.9% .9 of the comments are incredible. Sometimes I'm like, yeah. why are people even so nice? I know. But there is that 0.1% that is just nasty. And those are usually from women. And I think, why? Why would you do this to another woman? Just put your own insecurity onto this woman. So I think that's something also very important 
to be aware of as an influencer to not do that yeah. and to not be influenced by other ones. A hundred percent. And it, it's funny and it's probably something that should be commented more, even in my own videos that just because I'm using these things, nobody needs any of them. And when we were talking about the eye thing, it was funny because the, my skincare journey over the past 12 years or whatever has changed. And I think everybody's does, you know, you were talking about having the lesions on your forehead. Like I've never had problematic skin. I've been very lucky. I didn't have acne as a kid. I just had that right genetic balance somehow that made it pretty smooth sailing. So by the time I started seeing the crow's feet around, the, you know, the wrinkles around the eyes, that's the part that started to bother me. And then over the years now, it's like wrinkles don't bother me. I'm 52 almost. And these, these are coming with the territory. But I said to you, for me, it's about healthy skin. I just want hydrated skin. That's all I'm chasing right now is the hydration train. That's really and the saggy bits or whatever. The hydration. <laughs> so for me, when I was talking about my eyes, it's not about wrinkles. It's actually about, for me, it gets very crepey. And it's that sort of textural thing that I don't like. That's why I choose to use eye products. Nobody needs to use eye products. Anything on your face can go right up to your eyes, including tretinoin. But you don't think sometimes, and I didn't until you had told me about this conversation, the impact that that might have had is, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with my eyes. And again, it's kind of a big responsibility to some extent, because I don't want to be responsible for creating concerns or a self-consciousness around something that people don't have. What was interesting for me is that awareness that, well, look how easily I can be made insecure, influenced. you know, yeah. or influenced or just run to yeah. the and go, oh my God, I have this problem. So to us as the consumer, as not the influencer, but as the consumer, as a YouTube watcher, also be aware of, we are bombarded with all these things, all these yeah. products and other women's insecurities and don't take them on. I think yeah. that's a good, it's a good awareness too, as the consumer of watching YouTube videos is this, this is not necessarily your problem and you don't necessarily need this. We are getting bombarded sometimes purposefully, sometimes not. You did, of course, not do that purposefully, but I took that on and just to have that awareness so that we don't become these just slaves of consumerism by everything that yeah. everybody else is insecure about. Just makes me wonder, should you have a little disclaimer at the beginning of every video <laughs> you don't need this stuff <laughs> you know but it, it is something I struggled with when I made my sculpture video for example sculpture is something I've always yeah. been curious about but I'm also such a big believer in learning to love ourselves you know I had yeah. such a struggle with learning to love myself over decades and I'm finally on that path which is probably a never-ending path and mm -hmm. it's something I don't ever want to compromise so it seems sort of how do those two fit how's how does learning to love yourself unconditionally yeah. Yeah. and then getting a biostimulator, how do, do those two fit? And that's something I struggle yeah. with sometimes. And I do think there is a place for it if it's done for the right reason. Yeah. But that is materialized struggle sharing for those reasons. Uh, absolutely. I think that every part of every, sorry, I'm stumbling over my word there too. <laughs> I, I think it's something that everybody probably struggles with. Why is it so hard to love ourselves anyway? You know, I don't know. I think it's so much of what we see out there and we think is perfect that we know what we see is perfect anyway. And I think that's why I like doing this channel. I muck up all the time. I have bloopers in there all the time. It, you know, some, some, you know, sometimes I'm stumbling over my words or, you know, it's just, it's a process, but it's, I try to be as me. I mean, I'm just me when I get on here at the end of the day. And I think that's more important being perfect there is no perfect we could talk about this for hours do you have anything else on your list do you have anything else on your list that you want to share that you've been influenced to buy <laughs> yeah we're gonna do a little a little plug here because i haven't used it yet okay my dr pen micro needling uh, situation yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as you know uh that's the next video we're going to be doing and it's been sitting here it's been here for months and i'm terrified to use it really really excited it's all charged up and ready to go Good. You definitely made me buy this, and you helped me buy the right one because apparently, and I've been watching so many videos about it in the past few weeks anyway, that there's a lot of other stuff on the market that might not be suitable uh, and might not be authentic. But, um, and I just have to say, I'm so excited that you're going to do this with me. You're actually going to walk me through it because I'm petrified. But I think it's one of those things that I think is going to do great things for my skin. And I don't think I would have made the jump if you and I hadn't gotten to know each other. And the trust factor is really there. And this is this is probably my scariest purchase. You know, one of those modalities that I had been thinking about and really wanting to try, but the fear factor has just been off the charts. But uh, right now, I'm thanking you for influencing me to buy that. We'll, we'll see how I think when it's over. <laughs> I, I think you will say, why did I wait so long to do this? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to talk you through it. Thanks for having me today. I had a ball. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you on your okay. channel.